Welcome to our Park City Market Talk webinar. I'm Ron Wilstein, a broker at Keller Williams Luxury Properties Worldwide in Park City. And I'm Jeremy Wilstein, the buyer consultant for the Wilstein team. And welcome to our November 2015 Park City Market Talk webinar. All right, we've got lots to talk about here. And the most important <clears throat> thing, of course, is the ski resorts will be opening. Park City Resort, which is now a combination of Park City Mountain Resort and Canyons, opens November 21st. Yeah, and then Deer Valley will open December 5th. They usually open a couple weeks after Park City um, in order to get the, the trails groomed perfectly. That's right. So uh, we also will, of course, deal with Park City market update, tell you what's been selling, what's not, and uh, get a good snapshot of the overall marketplace. And then we're going to talk again and give you the big update on the $50 million renovation plan at Park City. And then we're going to do for our second time this segment entitled Lightning Flash Facts. And what we're doing there is we look at quick bits of information in the real estate market. We give it to you fast and furious, 15 seconds or less. But uh, it's the most uh, outstanding issues that we spot in the marketplace. And we figured out this is the best way to give it to you. All right. And then we're going to talk about when uh, most people buy Park City real estate. All right. So with that in mind, let's jump right into the market update. Uh, over the past 12 months, there's been 1,444 sales. This is homes, condominiums, and vacant land. This is all real estate brokerages combined. So that's actually up 10% or 135 sales from the same 12-month period the year before. This graph is the year-to-year -year comparison of closed sales, and these are comparing homes, condos, and vacant lots uh, all throughout Park City. And you can see the homes were up 4%. Condominiums are up a whopping 24%. We'll talk about uh, what happened on the condominium market here recently. And then lots are, they're down 13%. We really have a lack of inventory of lots. So there's still a demand. It's just not as much product to buy. Now here we're breaking it down to uh, homes and we, we have Park City as well as Snyderville Basin. Park City homes have climbed about 8% in terms of number of <clears throat> transactions from 163 to 176 and Snyderville Basin from 333 to 340, a 2% increase. All right, well, let's take a look, quick look at the condos. Inside the city limits, we're up 7% in terms of condo sales. And then take a look at Snyderville Basin, up 48%. What happened out there? Wow, lots of different properties, both a combination of new ones uh, that have come on the market as well as uh, used ones, resales. Yeah, so we have uh, three big new projects. That's Bear Hollow Ridge, <clears throat> Courtyard at Cory Village, and uh, New Park Terrace all came online and sold quickly. Yes, so condos are hot, hot, hot. <clears throat> Here we're looking at lot sales, slightly down within the city limits, 16%, but it really is just six sales. And we just have a lack of inventory within the city. We also saw a decline in the county from 181 sales to 158. Um, again, just not a lot of choices out there, not a lack of interest for people buying lots. Yeah. Average time on market, if you're a seller, you're gonna be happy. It's down 15% to 104 days. So that's just over three months on average for our entire marketplace with some, many neighborhoods selling within days. That's right, we've been watching this each month and this is quite mm. a bit of a drop. And again, it favors a stronger market and is an indicator that buyers are stepping up, not only buying properties, but they're buying them quicker. Mm -hmm. So let's look at what is happening with prices, Jeremy. All right, so this graph is gonna show you the uh, home median sold price. And uh, wow, look at Park City city limits. We're up 12% from a million three, the average home price, up to a million four fifty. Wow. 150,000 more year over year. Um, and then in terms of percentage wise, pretty similar out in uh, Snyderville Basin, we're up 13% with the average price of a home being $865,000. So prices are climbing just as sales were. We shift over here to condominium med medium sold prices. In the city limits up about 6% from 535,000 to now 565,000. But we see the big jump here in the Snyderville Basin, 16% where it's topping out just under 400,000, now at 395,000 for the medium sold price for condos. 
and lot sales inside the city limits. Again, not a lot of sales, but we are up 23%, all the way up to 675,000 for a lot price. Again, not a ton of inventory, so one lot can skew that. So um, take that with a grain of salt. And then Snyderville Basin, uh, much more, uh, excuse me, a lot more inventory, a lot more sales, up 17%. So that's a pretty reliable number with the average price being 350000 So you can see with our market here in Park City, overall prices have climbed, activity is good, good strong marketplace. <clears throat> now let's shift over to uh, the renovations at Park City. People are dying to get onto the hill, see this stuff firsthand. But we'll start out with the... Uh, the upgrades and the focus on the Quicksilver Gondola. This is the lift that connects the two resorts and a nice big uh, gondola to whisk you around the mountain, yeah. which would be a lot of fun. Um, I always like this picture. I love that helicopter bringing in the pieces. It's an incredible process that they do. They did a very quick fail. Very yeah. quick. Um, there's also the new restaurant at the base of the Quicksilver Gondola and Silverload Express. This was the old snow hut, if you've been in Park City, and they upgraded to the new miners' cabin, or miners' camp, sorry. And then at uh, the King Kong lift, that used to be a four-passenger lift, it's now a six-pack high speed, so <clears throat> that will whisk you up the hill, get you onto the mountain, and sometimes it would get a little bit backed up, so this should take care of uh, any slowdown that in the past had occurred there. Now these are the high points. With $50 million, you can buy a lot more stuff than this, but they did a lot of maintenance. So uh, <clears throat> we're excited when the lifts open uh, to see all this firsthand. So opening day of Park City. We used to report Park City's opening day and Canyon's opening mm -hmm. day, but now they're one, so <clears throat> it's just Park City, and that's November 21st. And we want to take this opportunity to let you know, if you're not familiar with Vail's Epic Pass, they actually offer two different passes. One is a locals pass that has some blackout dates uh, but it saves you a couple hundred dollars and then the epic pass is you don't have to live in Utah for. The key thing that we want to stress is not only does this pass give you access to the 7,300 acres of skiable terrain at the Park City Resort, the largest resort in the country, but you can take that same pass over to Vail, Beaver Creek, Breckenridge. You can even go to Australia and ski Parisher with that same pass because they're all Vail Resorts, so that's, that's just an incredible opportunity. Deer Valley is going to be opening here uh, beginning of first Saturday in December, and of course, as we mentioned earlier, they want everything to look its very best before the, anyone skis on the yeah. mountain of Deer Valley. All right, let's jump into the lightning flash facts. Say that ten times fast. <laughs> that's right. So let me tell you what we're doing here. We're scanning constantly the marketplace, and when we see something unusual that jumps out, whether it's in a neighborhood or a condominium property or what have you, that's what we're giving you. And we're, going, we're doing these segments about every quarter. So let's jump right on into it. All right, first one, single-family homes in Deercrest. There was five homes sold so far this year, which represents a 67% increase from only three the year before. And take a look at the median sold price, up to $6.3 million, a 20% increase over the previous year. Wow. Shifting over to Silver Springs area, got 34 homes sold this year. Actually, the year before it was, uh, and, and by the way, we're talking about January through the end of October, so it's not a full 12-month period. Uh, 37, so it's actually a decline. That's not why we're bringing this to your attention as much as the prices are up 25% year over year up to $960,000 for a medium sold price. Prices have climbed at Silver Springs. All right, let's talk about Pine Brook. 42 homes sold so far this year, 27% increase from 33 the year before. And uh, the median sold price was <clears throat> up just 2% to 733, 750, but a big increase in uh, number of homes sold in Pine Brook. And that's nice because that comes off of a uh, slow year and a half that Pine Brook had before that. <clears throat> Glen Wild slash Silver Creek area, 31 homes sold this past year. Now that's up from 19, so statistically it's a 63% increase. Not only that, price is up 26% with the medium sold price, $1,225,000. All right, and here's Promontory, 45 homes sold so far this year, 22% increase from the year before. Uh, median sold price, about flat, $1,640,000. 
uh, 1% increase over the previous year. Jornel out by the reservoir, 29 homes sold, that's up 71% from 17 the year before. So we're seeing movement over to the Jornel area. Medium sold price up 6%, now at $900,000. An old town, 91. So we're shifting over to condos here. <clears throat> Sorry, I got a little fast. 91 <laughs> condos sold so far this year. That's a 32% decline from 122. But take a look at that sold price up 26% to 465. So while we've had a decline in sales, it's because of our lack of inventory, which is in turn raising the price. Supply and demand. Supply diminishes, demand goes up, prices go up. <clears throat> Lower Deer Valley, and uh, many of you have been following this, was really lagging for a couple of years. It's nice to see them pull out of this. 55 condo sales compared to 36 the year before. That's a 53% increase. And look at this. Prices, medium sold price, 800,000, a 17% increase. I think we're out of that Deer Valley lower yep. slowdown. Deer Valley, lower Deer Valley was in a big slump and they're shooting off. They're out. Prospector Square, 49 condos sold so far this year up. 158% from 19 the year before. So, and there wasn't really new inventory in there. So it's just, it got hot. Prospector Square started selling again. Uh, median sold price up 16% to 155,000. Now we're out to the Sun Peak Bear Hollow areas where there was a lot of activity in terms of the increases. 52 condos sold from 24 the year before, a 117% increase. Medium sold price actually down by 7% to 393700 And And uh, so Bear Hollow area also had that new project come online, Bear Hollow Ridge. I think 18 or 19 units in there. So that uh, take into account the more condos sold as well. That's right. Kibble Junction, 121 condos sold this year up from 54 the year before. 124% wow. increase. Uh, also had a new project in here in New Park Terrace that came online and sold out very quickly. Uh, median sold price up 64%. <laughs> now do keep in mind that that's reflected by the fact that we've got new projects. Yes. New projects have the latest bells and whistles and the new project price tag. Yep. So now it's 365,250 for medium price. <clears throat> out at Jeremy Ranch, 16 condos sold. That's up from 10 the year before, 60% increase. Take a look at that price, up 17% for condos in Jeremy Ranch, now at $574,450. Well, that was fun. Uh, I really like doing this because it just lets you know the pulse of the market. And it's interesting, we did this two months ago, and the categories, with the exception of about three or four, all changed. Yeah. So the market changes. This is the best way we can let you know what's hot. Yeah, and if you know if we covered one of the areas where you own real estate or you're interested in, you want to dig deeper into what actually sold, shoot us an email and we can uh, send you the more detailed list of uh, of the projects where we're getting these numbers from. Yep. All right. Let's shift to uh, when do most people buy Park City real estate? <clears throat> what is that? Well, it's either at the beginning of the ski season. Or midway through the ski season or at the end of the ski season wow well that's like stating the obvious well <laughs> it's true but let's tell it let's tell you why they pick which time they pick all right so let's talk about buyers who purchase at the beginning of the ski season uh, first off they want to have a place to come and use during the ski season they want to come use their investment that's the beauty of the real estate here you can come out enjoy it for a holiday weekend or a week or stay for a month that's right, and many do. And they also want the first choice on available listed properties before others purchase them. At the beginning of the ski season, those sellers that are wishing to sell for the highest price will usually get their properties on the market and um, start the, the winter buying season. So that's kind right of, about now. Kind of the cream of the crop if people have aggressively planned to be on the market when the resorts open. How about the midway through? Why do they do that, Jeremy? Midway through, excuse me, most often these are people that may have can't come at the beginning of the ski season, decided they want to purchase in Park City, and then they came back halfway through the ski season during their second visit to actually purchase a property. And we see that quite a bit. Yeah. <clears throat> um, they also realize properties have been on the market for, for a while without selling, so they're out to get a better deal 
halfway through the ski season, maybe a seller that hasn't sold is getting a little, starting to get a little nervous. How about at the end of the ski season? So the end of the ski season, these are usually buyers that want to get a fantastic, great deal from, again, disappointed sellers who weren't able to sell their property during the ski season. Sometimes you can get a discount. Um, it kind of depends. Every deal is different. And uh, they're investing for the long term. They don't mind buying at the end of the ski season and carrying the cost of the unit. If somebody's buying it for a second home, it doesn't matter. If somebody's buying for investment, you know, there's not going to be as much nightly rental revenue throughout the summer but you could possibly get a better deal and come up, uh, come up above in there. That's right, off and offset, because sellers at the end of the season, they haven't sold or they're really ready to sell typically. <clears throat> so what's best for your particular situation? If you're a buyer, let's take a shot at that. So if you, if you want first choice of properties on the market before they get picked up, picked through by other buyers, you'll want to come and purchase a property at the uh, beginning of the uh, ski season. So by now, we're right, we're about to, the resorts are about to open. Um, usually we get a flood of inventory before Christmas. People are really looking to sell. And uh, if you're undecided about buying a property in Park City or you haven't yet found the property that you feel you must have, then just wait, you know, wait till it feels right. And, uh, but watch the market carefully and be ready to act quickly if, if your right property comes along because as you saw earlier, the days on market has shrunk, inventory shrunk, there's more buyers in the marketplace, so you just gotta act quickly. <clears throat> and if you want the best best buy and price, maybe postpone to buy the final months of the skis, and maybe you start negotiating on properties in March and April um, in order to catch a seller that is getting a little nervous that they won't sell the property before the ski season is over, especially if they have, say, a ski condo or a ski in, ski out condo when it's uh, maximized use. Yeah, the risk in doing that, however, keep in mind is that uh, the best properties are typically picked up at the beginning of the season. So while you'll get a better price, you're probably getting perhaps a less desirable property. Yeah. And since we have such a low inventory, if we get to the end of the ski season and the inventory is still low, it won't make that big of a difference in getting a better price because you know, it's just the, the supply and demand. So. Um, it's a tactic you use. It's not the end-all tactic. We've gotten some good deals at the end of the ski season, but you know, usually if that right property comes on, you just want to snag it. You do, you do want to buy it because our, our limited inventory favors the potential of uh, values in, staying firm at the end of the season, sometimes maybe even going up in some instances. Yeah. So let's shift to uh, what should a seller do. Well, that depends on a number of different things. If you want to sell for the highest possible price, try to do so during the first couple of months of the season. This is really, really important. You don't want to price your property so high that it turns buyers away. Obviously, you won't sell it if that happens. So you want to try to get the best deal possible as some buyers are, while shopping, they're afraid of losing their property to another buyer. And so they'll often step up and because they may be able to use it during the ski season, perhaps willing to pay a little bit more get the very best property. So ironically, those who want the highest possible price, get it on the market, try to sell it right away. If you want to use your property this season, then you want to postpone listing it rather than putting it on the market and having it sit there for a while or overpricing it so nobody buys it. Just put off putting it on the market until later in the season when you're ready to sell it. But realize buyers will be less inclined to pay you top dollar for your property as they start moving toward the end of the season where they're going to earn little or no income during the off season. And so they evaluate that in, as a trade-off. So as a seller, if you've got a rental property, uh, you want to realize that a buyer is going to process it in that fashion. And then finally, uh, if you're thinking that you want to sell your property late in the season after you receive most of your income from it, my advice is rethink this strategy. I don't think it's a good idea. The income you will earn will not offset the higher sale price you're likely to get at the beginning of the season. So don't get so fixated on the income and give up on the sale price. Uh, instead, do it the other way around and you're going to net more into your pocket. So we're here for you. We've covered a lot of information in this webinar. If you wish to discuss your options with us, give us a call. 
send us an email. We'll be happy to share our thoughts with you. All right, so if you have any questions, again, feel free to email us at either Ron or Jeremy at thewillsteamteam.com. We'll promptly get back to you. All right, well, thanks for participating. Uh, we're going to update our webinar. Our next webinar will come out uh, December 15th, right before the Christmas holiday. All right, so enjoy your Thanksgiving. Tune up the equipment and see you on the slopes. All right, have bye a bye. Fun.